Hey traders, happy Monday. Chris Palmer here with the Weekly Outlook talking about the stocks, Forex, crypto outlook for the week of December 16th through the 20th. Uh, what a wild week we just had and we're about to have another busy week to take in the last full week of trading before the holidays kick in. So what did we deal with last week? Well, we had a Fed rate decision, which was unchanged at 1.50 to 1.75%. That's the lower and upper threshold. We had a Swiss National Bank rate decision, which stayed the same at negative 0.75%. We had an ECB rate decision and press conference, which stayed the same at 0%. Uh, with Christine Lagarde, she is the new ECB president, new press conference there. But all things centered around the UK election. Uh, I ran three sessions Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with my tag team partner, Gary Fickhart. Uh, we had a lot of fun running that session and uh, we had some great trading, some great results. We had traders making anywhere from 100 pips to over 1,000 pips, just depending on how active and how aggressive some of our traders were. Uh, so hats off to all the traders that were participating. There was some really simple trading on Thursday. Uh, our crazy rollover trade from 5 p.m. onward, which unless you were already in trades or already positioned for, uh, there were some scalping opportunities afterwards, but that window from literally 5 p.m. Eastern Time to 5.05 Eastern Time uh, was a you know 100 to 300 pip candle in five minutes. Uh, after the rollover period, when there's low liquidity, the market essentially was pricing in those first exit pulls that shows that conservatives were uh, winning in landslide type fashion, and that's exactly what ended up happening. So it turns out that the UK does indeed want Brexit, uh, voting for Boris Johnson and his conservative party. Uh, there will be some paperwork hitting the desks here, hopefully by the end of the week on December 20th. Uh, the European Union and the UK have a deadline uh, January 2020, but I'm sure that all the trade terms and the full-on Brexit, uh, if it's officially going to happen, uh, will be going into you know 2020. And this this election didn't necessarily solve anything other than hopefully smooth out the process of if there is Brexit, it will be smoother than starting over and having a, a political shakeup uh, or a hung parliament. So at least there was that to take away from it. You sprinkle that in with new historical highs in the U.S. markets as U.S. and China agreed in principle to some trade deals. Uh, Nothing is officially in writing, but rumor has it now that it's going to be in January of 2020. Uh, but really, the trade negotiations have gone well. The market's optimistic. This is really what uh, I would say holds on to the Santa Claus rally to kick in high gear for the rest of the month. Uh, we have one full week of trading. We have this week, the 16th of December to the 20th of December. Next week is going to be interrupted by holidays. We have the 24th of Christmas Eve, 25th Christmas Day, running all the way through New Year's. Uh, so really, we're going to have kind of two interrupted weeks uh, until trading will resume most likely, it's going to be the 6th of, of January in 2020, where full trading resumes. So expect there to be some drifts and trends. I would not be surprised to see some risk appetite closing up the year. Uh, and of course, we'll see where 2020 brings us. But heading into the markets this morning, U.S. market is on the rally and on the rise. Uh, U.S. markets, again, are at new historical highs, as President Trump just tweeted about. So uh, it's, it was a crazy week. I mean, we had a lot of rate decisions, UK election, US and China talks, risk on. Uh, everything was really cooking on Thursday. Uh, that would have been the 12th of December. I mean, for me personally, I had several thousand dollars in swings in my favor. I'm, I'm long in a lot of Aussie pairs and New Zealand pairs. And Thursday was a screaming move. And then the reality set in quickly on Friday. We're like, well, there's nothing official. We haven't signed anything yet between US and China. And there was a little bit of a setback on Friday to uh, kind of close up the week with a dose of reality. But here we are just kicking things off again, new highs. So gap higher in the weekend, risk appetite well underway. And we'll hopefully see a weaker dollar, a weaker Swiss franc, a weaker Japanese yen in the uh, Forex market. It'd be nice to see with the weaker dollar if the crypto market can start to move. Uh, we do have some interesting stocks coming on this week. Uh, we'll go through the economic calendar here in just a moment. But stock-wise, we are looking at uh, earnings from FedEx. Uh, earnings from General Mills. We have uh, Nike with earnings this week. Uh, I read something interesting. Uh, the company Hasbro, who is a uh, you know longtime toy maker, missed a huge opportunity for the holiday season uh, with Disney Plus, which has I don't know how many billions of dollars already from subscribers. But uh, the all the talk of the town is Baby Yoda, and Hasbro can't get a toy out soon enough. Uh, in fact, they're not going to have toys ready until May 2020, so they're missing out on. Uh, who knows how many millions and millions of dollars to uh, you know wrap in the holiday year. So, 
And for those of you that are following me out there in the social media world, this is how you can find me on the respective outlets. This is Instagram at pulver.chris, Twitter at pulverchris, Facebook, YouTube, just type in my name. I uh, appreciate the personal messages and the feedback, the subscriptions, the likes, all that good stuff, uh, videos like this and many more coming at you. So let's get into the markets here. Let's have some fun. And uh, let's take a quick look at that baby Yoda and see what is missing out on the holiday season. And there he is. You can see what Hasbro is missing out on. Uh, who would want that as a stuffed animal, a little action figure, a Funko Pop that you can smile at every day in your office. All right, a quick glance at the SPY. We are opening higher, uh, just picking up where we left off from last week. So we're closing on new highs and still pushing. This is Santa Claus Rally, Path of Least Resistance, with more clarity out of U.S. and China with trade negotiations, with Brexit, uh, a little bit more clarity on Brexit, and uh, just the party continues to run. Now, uh, we will see, of course, how this uh, gets us into 2020, but right now, I would say stay the course, Enjoy the profits, enjoy the run. What an amazing turnaround we've had since the low in 2000, uh, that's 2018, December 26th, actually. Uh, the markets were closed for one day on the 25th, and then boom, V bottom, and off we go with a 30 plus percent rally to the upside. Uh, even though it's marginally higher than the highs of 2018, it's still a you know incredible run by the markets, and we'll see where this leads us. So this may be heading into you know what looks to be uncharted territories, but as we're going up here with more and more movement, that's great, but get ready for uh, a pretty violent 2020 presidential election, maybe after election. It is the technical inevitability. Uh, it's just a matter of what will be the fundamentals that tie into that. Uh, we're looking at probably a 30 plus percent correction, 20 to 30 percent, uh, just if the market wants to maintain any type of bullishness. Uh, but again, it's not happening right now. So this is all a good time for risk appetite and to stay with it. So going to the currency market, I want to take a quick glance at the, the, the pound pairs in case you were not paying attention last week. Uh, this is just an example of the pound. This is right at that rollover period from Thursday to Friday when the exit polls were coming in. This is a candle low at 9.045, a candle high at 9.445. So you're looking at a 400 pip candle. And this actually happened within about five minutes. And it's at 5 p.m. I saw spreads up to about 100 pips on a lot of these pound crosses. Uh, <laughs> very difficult to trade. Now, what did traders do? What did traders do to, to grab some profit? Well, on Thursday, they made a really nice trade here during the day. It was a nice little breakout to the downside. And then late in the afternoon, we had this huge run. Let me draw that again. So we had this nice break to the downside throughout Thursday's trading day. And then the rollover period to Thursday, Friday to start off that new day was right there. So the trade of the day Friday was actually the news kicks in at 5 p.m. The market comes and retests the high. That is your opportunity to short. That was probably the best trade of the day. Uh, if you're paying attention to price action, that's a great lesson. So follow the strategy. We had several strategies we talked about last week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Nice little break to the downside. Uh, I ended up grabbing about uh, 100 pips combined on pound pairs on Wednesday to Thursday. Uh, yeah, actually, it's Thursday's trading day, about 100 pips on pound crosses. And then after this happened, I actually shorted uh, the pound movement. So on Euro Pound, for example, that was the only pair that I was choosing to trade. And I'll tell you why in a second. But I bought the Euro Pound and ended up making about 90 pips on that one. So for me, I walked away with a pretty conservative uh, effort, but it was a nice 200 pip grab for the week. Uh, in addition to some nice risk appetite that was kicking in with Aussie pairs. I'm in, I'm in like 30 positions right now between Aussie CAD, Aussie Swiss, Aussie New Zealand, Aussie Dollar, New Zealand CAD, New Zealand Swiss, New Zealand Dollar. I've been longing those for quite a while and I'm just letting those profits run. So I wanted to grab some pound pairs, wanted to grab some pips. I did, uh, but certainly a lot of traders were uh, way more successful and way more aggressive than I was. But it was nice price action trade overall. Strategy to short it during the day Thursday and then strategy to short it here at a double top. Uh, that was another really nice chunk of profit. In fact, if you're just doing the numbers on that, I mean, we ended up dropping from that level around 270 pips. This is just pound Australian dollar. If we sold it at the high, which is a great double top, uh, even that move right there is around 70 pips. If you give it a little bit more time, it retakes this level, starts to come back into this large candle, and that ends up going about 190 pips to the downside before balancing back out. So good opportunity either way uh, if you're trading the pound crosses. Uh, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar, go to a higher time frame. So oil is also a pretty big story right now. Dollar index. So we had FOMC. This was post-FOMC on Wednesday. I uh, can see that big... Indecision candle, this would be Monday's candle, Friday's candle last week. Uh, we did officially break this neckline. So really this has only one option for me. Uh, well, uh, the option really is we're going to be selling the dollar. We expect to see a weaker dollar. There's only two ways that I see this playing out. 
Right now, because we have broken this neckline, I do expect this to go lower. If the stock market's going to continue to rally, the dollar should continue to fall. That should be the correlation we see by the end of the year. Um, if we hold these levels and come back up, all this is is a flat pattern to short again. So that should set up an opportunity for a very nice position to be made on dollar pairs. This would be Aussie dollar long, Euro dollar long, New Zealand dollar long, possibly even pound dollar. If you still want to bring in some Brexit to your trading or have some exposure on the pound, uh, pound pairs, the pound dollar does have a really clean technical setup. So we'll go through that in just a little bit as I go through alphabetically with currency pairs. But uh, really, it's, it's just in the near term, medium term, this is a bearish move on the dollar. Two levels that I'm looking at, we have this low from uh, early 2019. This is really January of 2019, right there around 12100 And I'm staring at this yearly pivot at 12032 So from current price, we have anywhere from 140 points to around, uh, around 200 points to the downside. And really, you know, dollar index wise, point for pips, uh, even if it was one to one, we're looking at 100, uh, 140 to 200 pip moves out there if it's a one to one, but typically this point system to pips ends up being higher. So we have one point in the dollar index equals about one and a half to two pips in the Forex market. So if we're going to see this drop, we should see some nice movement on currency pairs that reflect a weaker dollar. And that's what I'm looking at. So that's dollar index. Let's talk about oil. Oil's has some pretty nice volatility. It's currently at $60 and change, but look left. Lots of resistance at 60 and 61. Lots of resistance at 60 and 61. Most likely, again, 60 and 61. OPEC members and Russia are agreeing to production cuts. Uh, however, uh, everything I'm reading about in 2020, there's still most likely an inevitable oil glut, which means there will be an oversupply, which means that there will still be some price stability that's sought. And I think that these highs around $61, crazy amounts of resistance that should hold, even if we come back up here towards 65 and 66. If we hold this channel on oil, even at 65 and 66, I still see oil dropping back down towards the, uh, the mid to low 50s, if not all the way back down to the support around $51. So there's been an incredible amount of stability in oil, which I do think is helping uh, just, I mean, it's helping supply and demand levels. It's helping countries operate within these margins. Uh, but the reality is it's helping traders too, because now we know where to sell and where to take profit, where to buy, where to buy, where to take profit and see this uh, consistently go back and forth between these areas. So I am looking for this range to continue. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this uh, down arrow right here. I'm looking for any evidence on a daily candle or any evidence on a smaller time frame to give us a reversal sign could be a bearish candlestick formation could be a price pattern stochastic wise we're in a nice spot to start seeing some confirmation to the downside uh, i would take this up possibly one more leg if you're not seeing any confirmation let this drift a little bit higher and if this goes anywhere up into this zone equal highs around 66 and change right up here in fact i'm just going to stretch this yellow box over that was our previous high and i look for that to be our next level of resistance if it doesn't fail right away at 60 and 61, which I do think is going to happen. So this could be a push into the holiday season. Again, think of this in terms of what the market wants. The market typically likes to see low volume, lower volatility, trending, breakouts, drifting during holiday trading. So don't get in the way of this, all right? But if you see the evidence of a short, that is a good opportunity to see confirmation and short this move. So the higher, the better, of course, so we can let our profits run. But if it's confirmation, then look for a pullback or a pause, trade this down. Confirmation, you know, one position, sell it back at the highs, second position, stop area above, trade it back down. So there's a lot of ways to play this. Uh, as I'm forecasting a weaker move in oil, that means that our Canadian dollar will also start to see some weakness. So that brings us into a nice transition into Aussie CAD, which is sitting here sideways and wholly sideways. I mean, we're sitting here at uh, 80, you know, roughly 9,000 to 9,100. It's a 100 pip range uh, since the high in October to the low of November. So we're sitting here sideways for about 100 pips. I still think this is a neckline break and looking for a weaker move in oil, which should in turn help weaken the CAD, driving this up towards 92 to even 93. I mean, this is where I want to protect profit. So I'm currently long in Aussie CAD, trying to get back to 9,250 and 9,300. We have a monthly pivot, we have a yearly pivot, we have all these big levels to the upside, but it's really just kind of one step at a time. Let's break this range. 
If we break this range, I'm going long and I'm going to stay long. If we come back down and retest the lows, I'm still going to buy it low and trade the range back up towards 92 and change. So I want to see Aussie CAD keep moving to the upside, just needs a break higher. Uh, really, a break above 9100 looks great. If we break above 91 with a daily candle close or a weekly candle close, that should be enough to get us where we need to go and see this thing go go up towards uh, you know 9250 and 9300. Okay, let's go to the old Aussie Swiss. If I can type that in, Aussie Swiss. Again, a lot of range bound trading. Highs around 68.50, lows around 6700. Still range bound. I'm watching to buy lows at 67. I'm watching to buy lows at 65.55. This is actually a really great setup that uh, we talked about last week in my live session during the UK. Even though this has nothing to do with the pound pairs, the Aussie Swiss at historical lows and the Euro Aussie with a great rising wedge pattern. So Aussie Swiss looks like a long trade and Euro Aussie looks like a short trade. So with those alignments, I could see this, you know, the big winner being the Australian dollar uh, or the big loser being the Swiss or the Euro. But either way, I see this as a reason to hold and stay long, which I am. And uh, I'm certainly being patient on this trade. And hopefully we see a move at least into, you know, 7,000 is a round number, but I'm looking for a much bigger move than that. I'd love this thing to get up to 7,800. And that might seem like an eternity away, but if you just look back to where we had highs in 2018, it's not that far away. You know, I mean, this is just a range. If we go from range lows, historical lows at 66 and continue to creep higher towards 77, I would love to be holding this the entire way. So that is one kind of, you know, medium term trade that I'm holding and trying to make as much money as I can to the upside here and be willing to hold it all the way up and just add. Uh, but first step first is just get to 7,000. I'll probably take some partial profits and look to reload at a later time, but still, I want to get to 77. Aussie Yen. Aussie Yen continues to track higher. Uh, finally, we made a poke above this level. I was not real impressed with the Yen structure for the last couple of weeks. I took a basically a minus 14 trade with a plus 50 on another trade for the CAD Yen. This just drifted sideways for many, many, many days, and then last week got all excited. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete this and clean this one up. Um, we'll come back and trade it, but I would say look for opportunities to be long against the yen. Aussie yen, CAD yen, Euro yen, Swiss yen, pound yen even, New Zealand yen, dollar yen. Look to stay long against the yen as we wrap up the year. That should be a pretty good trending basket uh, to take us into the end of the year. Aussie New Zealand, currently trading around 104.30. Uh, we had a nice little move back into 10400, which is what I expected to the downside. I have some buy, tra uh, buy trades that are already added in. My break even is right around 105. I'm going to continue to hold the position and build this. Now, I am prepared for this to come back down to 102. I'm even prepared this for this to go all the way down to 1.0000, just around parity. But I'm going to take this all the way back up towards 110 and really all the way back to 1.14. So I remain committed long on this currency pair. And, um, you know, we're probably not going to make much of a turning point right now. But if we just go sideways, 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 let's see what kicks off into 2020. I hope the first move is right back up to 107 or even higher around 109. Uh, but I remain long on my Aussie New Zealand positions. Aussie dollar, I'm also long in Aussie dollar. Uh, full disclosure, I'm long in Aussie CAD and Aussie Swiss as well. Aussie dollar, uh, a nice break to the upside. I do see this as a crown pattern. I'm looking for a push symmetry wise to get to around 7,000. We're almost there. We had a decent uh, push on Thursday of last week. The high was around 69 and change. 69.37, 7,000 is my first target. But look at what we're doing. If we break above this level to 7,000, this is also a year-long downtrend within a two-year-long downtrend. So I do think that this pair does uh, deserve a recovery, deserve a retracement. 7,000 is a nice conservative level. We could probably go all the way back to 7,200 as well if you're willing to hold it and see a weaker U.S. dollar, which I think does align really nicely. CAD Swiss, I'm looking for CAD weakness. Um, I don't know how aggressive this pair is going to be, but I hope we can break lower and start drifting back down into 73 in this zone. I will not sell this CAD Swiss. I'm only waiting here to buy it lower, and that's my game plan is just to buy it extremely low and leave this one alone. Uh, CAD Yen, as I said, stay long against the Yen pairs. This one's at new highs or getting back up towards new highs. Uh, we had a previous high back in October. Looks like we're going to take that one out and start heading up. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this one up here. Trend line support, you know, it was a little slippery on the right side of the trend line, but still held nicely. And uh, risk appetite is in full bloom right now. Swiss Yen, 
This one is a bit on the tricky side. We broke nicely above 110. Uh, I was actually expecting this with the you know safe haven versus safe haven to hold the highs around 110 and range between 110 and 109. Uh, you can see that it didn't do that. So this one's running hot to the upside. And uh, just looking left, the next real level of resistance is around 111.70 or just call it 112 and we're nearly there. I mean, heck, we almost hit it last week. Uh, there's a high, I'm trying to get that candle. So it looks like my candle high is at 111. Uh, what is that? 111.76 was a high from last week. Wow. So we nearly ran all the way back into these highs around 111.90. So anyway, that's it on Swiss Yen. Uh, I'll revisit this one at a later point. Next will be our uh, Euro Aussie. So as I said, Aussie Swiss looks like a great opportunity to stay long. This looks like a good opportunity to stay short. And I've, I mean, here's what I'm doing. I'm measuring this. It, to me, I see a large head and shoulders. Right there is your left shoulder, head to neckline. This blue line represents the neckline. If we can just get this thing to break this neckline, we're heading down quite a ways. I mean, we're going all the way down to 5,200. That's a measured head and shoulders move, right? Current price is around 62. So we're talking about 1,000 pips to the downside. And there is a lot more to go. I mean, it's just that's just me measuring this move. We could have a three-wave move. One, two, three, four, five. We could go much lower and come back all the way into these levels or this low around 1.40 which would be over 2,000 pips from current price. Uh, so it's being range bound right now. I'm still looking to sell it around 6,350 to 6,400. Um, I'm selling it as high as I can on the structure, but once we end up breaking this 1.60 level, I'm looking to stay bearish towards 5,200. So this is a nice chunk of profit. Um, currently, I am holding... Actually, I, I'm, I'm out of this trade now. I, I closed some profit here in a couple of levels. I closed profit over here. Because we got back to 6,000, I sold it again around 6,250, and I'm looking to sell it here at 6,365, which has not been activated yet. So I'm currently short with another pending order at the equal tops. If it just gets down to 6,000, I'm probably going to hang on to this. I've already taken some profit there. I'm going to hang on to this one and see if it breaks below and it starts to break and trend into end of this year or early next year and try to run this trend uh, as long as I can. So I like that Eurowasi to the downside. Eurocad. EuroCAD, lots of resets. This one might be the most volatile choppy currency pair out there. Lots of lots of indecision going on right now, having a heck of a time breaking these highs. Uh, this could be really, really sideways. My plan is this. I will still buy this pair low and I'll sell this pair high. I'm not doing anything right now. We bought it there for profit. We bought it here for profit. We bought it here for profit. We bought it here for profit. We've had all these scalping opportunities. I'll still load those up. I'll buy it again, probably at these levels, and see if it wants to, you know, offer some chances to protect some profit. Otherwise, I'm not going to do anything. I'll sell it up here, I'll buy it down here, and then I'll let the market fight right now. So that's what it's doing at this time is fighting. But if we come back down towards 4,500 or 4,450, I'll buy it. If we go up towards 5,000, I'll look to sell it. Euro Swiss. One pair that I'm looking to hopefully make a lot of money on, uh, Euro Swiss. I'd love, and this is a crazy candle from last week, Thursday to Friday. Uh, we had highs at 110.32, lows at, uh, that means a 100 pip candle. 100 pip candle on the Euro Swiss, which is pretty big. Uh, I'm looking at levels at 111.00 or 111.50. I hope this delivers. You know, holding these lows, try to find a way to work itself into that zone. 111.50, previous support, lots of previous support, and for me, that's a big chunk of profit that I'm going to cash in on. But it's not done yet. Uh, I'll still wait and see how this plays out. I might have to see this come back down to the lows or come back down to this right side of the channel and fill this gap around 107, and then I'll buy it. Uh, so I do remain pretty long-term oriented on Euro Swiss, and I'll build up a position on it. Should be paying out nicely when it is all said and done. Uh, Euro Pound, this is my little short-term trade from last week. Uh, during the election, it was after that rollover period. Come on, man, type that in. Euro pounds. So we came all the way down to previous support around uh, equal lows at 8,300. Now, I do think that there is a short term correction that is likely going to happen on pound crosses. Um, I'm really skeptical on being heavy, heavily position oriented on pound pairs. I think this could pull back briefly and then drop. I think this could go a little bit lower and then rally. I do think that in the short term, you know, again, why fight it right now? If you grab some pips last week out of the UK election, anywhere from 100 pips to 200 pips to 1,000 plus pips, look, consider that a nice little bonus for the holiday. 
You know, I, I, I don't personally want to jump in and trade a bunch of pound uh, pairs because right now, I mean, it's back to the drawing board with paperwork. Now, yes, it's Boris Johnson in control. Yes, the Conservative Party won by a landslide. But December 20th is another big deadline for Brexit. And it's going to carry over in 2020 with whatever comes up between the UK uh, and the Conservative Party and the negotiations with the European Union. That is all uncertain to me as a trader. So we could still see some choppy price action. Uh, we might have the market kind of bake in that election. And from there, whatever happens, happens. So I'm still kind of short-term oriented. And I think last week was fun just to trade it, grab a few pips, and uh, you know, focus your attention elsewhere and see if it sets up something better. Uh, but for right now, you know, I expect there to be some type of correction on pound pairs, but I'd like to see pound strength continue. And mainly, here's the two currency pairs that I like. I'm just going to skip ahead to these two pairs. I think pound Swiss has a, a huge upside potential. So let me, you know what, I'm just going to take all this away. So let me delete all this stuff. This is pound Swiss. Okay, higher time frame. Let's go to the weekly. Okay, weekly lows. Look at this support right there. Major, major, major support right around 1.17. Longer term, if we come up here to these highs, come up to these highs, what better pattern to make than something bullish right here to run much higher? Or come back down into the range around 1.17 and buy it again to take the range back up to 1.34. So I do think that right now as we're trading around 131, I think there's room to the upside to continue to run towards 134, which I'm going to put another line right up here. So 134, lots of resistance. And we can score a point there for the bulls. We nearly did on Thursday during that rollover period. I mean, the high on that candle is 3309. We have highs around 3360 to 3400. So I could see this drifting a little bit higher, but watch for some heavy resistance. So look for this area to hold. Look for a trend line break. This might come up here, pause, 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 indecision, indecision, and then start to work its way back down into this area. That's great. I mean, this is a short opportunity right there to sell. You can make some pips on the way down for a few hundred pips. From there, I'm almost looking to buy the pound Swiss in here, buy the pound Swiss in here, and hold it for a while. You'll get some positive rollover. You get a nice, I mean, I would hope a nice bullish pattern that holds, and uh, this becomes just a big opportunity to the upside uh, in, the, in the medium term. So again, I like this trade. Pound Swiss looks really good to me to you know short term sell around 134 resistance take it down for a few hundred pips and then around 126 to 120 i'm looking to buy this and just kind of take small positions and stay long near historical lows buy it buy it buy it buy it buy it all small positions build them up you know give yourself a break even let's say it comes all the way back down have a position around 123 122 50 and then take it up towards 134 and if, if it ends up breaking to go higher we can take this range and we can put it on top and we can have this running all the way back to 150. But for right now, let's deal with what we have price action wise, which is going to be short term resistance on pound pairs from a technical standpoint. Pound yen. Uh, pound yen, again, short term pullback, most likely look for it to revisit either a previous high from the breakout or this previous low uh, that's around 141 to 139 and change, 139.50 50. Short term correction on the pound. Pound dollar is the only other one that I like right now position wise. And that's because I'm looking at a bigger move in the U.S. dollar. Look what we did right here. During that rollover period last Thursday, when the exit polls first came in, the market just quickly jumped. We scored a point right there for those bulls. To me, that's a big sign because now we have structure with a left tip, center tip. Short term, we expect a correction on the, on the pound, 128 to 124. This is going to be my level that I'm looking to buy the pound. 128 to 124. I'm not going to stop out if it goes below that. I'm willing to take this down to 1.20. But I think this is a really nice reversal pattern. Left tip, center tip. Let's set up a right tip, build some positions, and then go higher. I think we can come all the way back up here to 1.42, 1.43. I also think this plays nicely into the forecast of a weaker dollar in the next three to six months. So. If we have just you know price stability on the pound and a weaker dollar, this pair should cooperate to that, uh, hopefully that degree. And again, technically speaking, off of 120, great lows to be trading from. Reversal pattern to me looks pretty good. New Zealand CAD, uh, New Zealand CAD, New Zealand Swiss, New Zealand dollar. I am long and still holding long and looking for this to continue to drift to the upside. 8,900 to 9,000, that's my big resistance before I start looking for sell opportunities. 
Uh, I'm just trying to get my mitts on anything I can buy. If it's a dip, I want to buy it. If it's a pullback, I want to buy it. Uh, but I'm looking to stay the course, getting up to 89 and 9,000 on New Zealand Canadian dollar. Uh, New Zealand Swiss, same thing. I want to stay long. We have room to run back up towards previous highs at 66.50. Also a nice resistance zone around 66.50. You can see how that coincides. Just channel support, channel resistance, and also a previous high in price. So we still have another probably 140 pips, 150 pips left to push this one up into the green zone. 66.50 looks pretty good. Anything above 6,600 is worth protecting if you're long. New Zealand yen. New Zealand yen. Just like the other yen pairs broke out, the New Zealand yen has been steady along this breakout from 7D. 70.00 uh, has broken up to 72 and change. I know a lot of traders have been long for this reason. There's a price gap around 73.50. So if you're holding it, that is a nice destination. Uh, if you're adding to this, this is another one to be looking to add uh, add to or stay long or look for re-entries. And uh, it's, it's going to be a good, it's, it is a good trade. I mean, it's just a nice simple breakout. Uh, so unlike the Aussie yen, which slid on the right side of the trend line, or unlike the CAD yen and the Euro yen that went a little sideways, okay, this one just stayed and broke higher. So this one's been pretty strong because the Kiwi has been firm. New Zealand dollar. New Zealand dollar. Anything on pullbacks I'm trying to add. So if I have any type of dips or pullbacks, this is just kind of slowly pulling back here. Look for dips, pullbacks, look to add to it. I have a measured move just off of this head and shoulders. Measure move to 6650. It's actually slightly higher than that, but we're also trading at 6600. Can we go another 50 pips higher? Yes. Can we go all the way back up to this high? Probably. Can we go to 7000 and keep drifting? Yes. I think this will stay bullish for right now. This previous high is 6770. This gap in this pocket that I've identified is 6890. 7000 is resistance. 7000 is also a massively important round number for this currency pair. So I could see this. All of this patience, setting up the bottoms, and now we're looking for wave patterns to the upside to get us into 7,000. So I'm looking for that, but again, staying long at least to 6,650. If you're holding a group of positions, that's a great spot to grab some profit. If you want to get back in, goes up, pulls back, add to it, and keep going towards the highs. Previous highs, 7,000, round. Then we'll start noticing the RBNZ start talking about the exchange rate and maybe looking at uh, introducing some rate cuts or trying to get the exchange rate back down, uh, but probably not for a while. We're going to start seeing a weaker dollar, which will help this move and probably give it a little bit more momentum to the upside. And uh, that is all the reason I'm long on Aussie dollar and New Zealand dollar. Dollar CAD. Uh, we are sideways and range bound. We have highs around 3350 and lows around 3000. Uh, look at this compared to oil. Remember the range that oil's in? Think of the range that the CAD is in, the dollar CAD. We have lows, highs, lows, highs. So we're probably going to deal with this. If oil remains range bound, expect the dollar CAD to do the same. I am looking for a weaker CAD because of weaker oil. So if oil responds to that $60, $61 resistance and starts to drop, look for this to start picking up some buy trades around 3000 If we go from 3000 to 3300 that's a nice range to trade. And that's what I'm focused in on right now for dollar CAD. Dollar Swiss starting to break. Uh, well, it looks like it's trying to break to the downside. Uh, personally, I have a position that is long right here, trying to get back to 1.00. It honestly, if it goes far, farther down, that's fine. I'm going to build a position on this one and I'm spacing out my trades where this is small entry one. This will be small entry two. This will be small entry three. I will hold for some positive rollover. And uh, I'm just going to level myself back into the dollar Swiss for a while. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, I'm still looking to see if the Swiss National Bank will kick in an overdrive for some manipulation and intervention. If they do, this level is a great spot to buy. This level is a great spot to buy. This level is certainly a good spot to buy. Any one of these jumps could get us all the way back into 1.00. If it does fall and I'm building some positions, my break even is still going to be down here towards the lows around 9,400 or 9,300. And from there, I'm looking to take it all the way back up. 99 looks good to me. 1.00 looks good to me as well. So that's that's definitely a longer term plan on the dollar Swiss. Uh, dollar yen, just like with all the yen pairs, continue to look for upside opportunities. Uh, this one might continue to track a little bit higher and faster, but we have been going very, very sideways and very choppy. You can see that pretty much with all these stochastic U-turns, you're starting to see the dollar yen responding to that. So it's 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 your call. I'd say the best opportunity here is look for these stochastic lows to buy the dips 
and see if this will continue to head up towards, you know, previous levels around 111, previous highs around 112. But I would say that very little right now is going to derail this from at least trying to make higher highs and higher lows. Uh, just with all the end pairs, I think all the end pairs will be good to be buying, uh, at least to take us into the end of this year and starting 2020. Uh, dollar peso, we had some steady downside movement here. We have several days in a row that have been bearish. Watch for some support to hold around 18.9. Uh, another thing that could influence this is we finally had some terms on the USMCA. That is uh, what was formerly known as NAFTA. Now it's a new deal between Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. Um, I know it finally got signed, and there were some, some, some terms that have changed to it. But uh, this might start to spruce up the Mexican peso a little bit and give us some better trading opportunities. Uh, whether that's good or bad for the peso, I don't know yet. But structurally, if this level holds, we could have a bouncing opportunity around 18.9%. Uh, this is currently trading at 18.95. So let this go a little bit lower. Uh, and let's see what happens. Let's see if we just, you know, have a channel like so, setting up some bottoms. One thing I don't like to do, you know, heading into the holidays is call tops and bottoms because I think the market likes to just continue to run. It's a very low volume time of year and you're usually going to see some breakouts and trends. So this might just continue to drift a little bit lower and we can always come back and reassess the peso. Same thing on the crone. Uh, I love these setups. I love the crone. We are looking for this. I mean, this finally turned. After this channel that started back in 2018, we finally broke out of this and look at where we, we went. This was a historical high. We retested it. So it does look like, and I said, this is probably going to be a, a great trade in 2020. You know, here we are just two weeks away from the end of the year. I, I want to sell this, but I'm not going to jump in and sell it right now. I think if we can hold this level, what was, you know, historical resistance, if it becomes a little bit more support, maybe we have a trade back up to the upside where we can look for equal tops to sell and look for this to, to you know top out and give us a sell opportunity. Or if it's choppy on the right side of this channel, we can look to sell some of these highs, look for a double top and we can sell it coming back down. So I do like dollar crone short. I do like Euro or uh, yeah, Euro crone right here. Same thing, Euro crone short and uh, same thing. Don't jump in and sell this. You know, don't jump in and sell it right now. We're coming back to equal lows. Let's see if we can pull back towards previous highs, pull back to a equal high and sell it off of these highs. That's a much better setup. You know, 10.10, 10.20. That can come all the way back down to nine. I mean, we have two to 3,000 pips worth of opportunity on the crone pairs. Uh, I like it, but be patient on it. So this is probably gonna be a trade I talk about in my room this week. We'll look at this heavy resistance on Euro crone, maybe a pending order right there at the top and see if we can get filled on that and let it run to the downside. Dollar crone might be a little bit trickier, but I still like it. I think the crone can uh, come back and bounce out a little bit. So that'll do it. Uh, it's been about 37 minutes in the video. I appreciate your time and watching. If you have any questions or want to get a hold of me, this is how you can. I'm out there on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, one more look at Baby Yoda to enjoy that. <laughs> Can't be mad at that this week. Uh, but we have a big week. You know, here is the economic calendar before we wrap things up. This week, we still have a lot of news. Okay, we had uh, Eurozone and uh, pound PMI numbers coming out this morning. And uh, looks like predominantly they were negative. You know, stru structure-wise, price action-wise, didn't really phase much. Uh, but we still have some high-impact news to get us into this last full week of trading. CPI news on pound, CAD, GDP news on New Zealand, Aussie news for employment. We'll see if they forecast a lot like the CAD, which is, you know, forecasting 15, coming in for plus 50 or minus 50. We'll see what that short-term volatility offers up on Wednesday. Uh, JPY monetary policy assessment overnight. Thursday, retail sales for the pound. And there's a rate decision as well, which you can see, this is interesting. Uh, they're actually forecasting another change in votes here. So we've had 009, 009 last month in November, there was a 027. So they're keeping that as the forecast. So we'll see if that vote changes from the Monetary Policy Committee, or if that goes back to 009. Uh, interest rate decision is likely going to stay the same at 0.75. So I will be running a live session on Thursday morning at 645 prior to my trading room at eight o'clock. So we'll trade that and see if the pound offers any short-term movement, pound current account, and retail sales for the CAD. So it's heavy this week. Euro and pound news this week. New Zealand, Aussie sprinkled in there, and a rate decision on Thursday as well. Uh, last full week of the trading week. Uh, after this, I'm taking a little break. The 23rd through the 3rd, I will be off. Uh, videos only, no trading rooms, no classes for me. Uh, I could use a break. I'm still going to be trading, still be monitoring things, running some robots, but uh, I'm ready to take a little time off and enjoy the holidays like everybody else. Uh, but I will be monitoring and tracking as always. So look for videos from me on the 23rd and 30th. Uh, but looking forward to getting through this week. This is another very strong week of trading, lots of news to get some movement, 
and let's enjoy it. All right, traders, have a good week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.